MS Nordam is a cruise ship that was built in 2006 by Finn Cantieri in Italy. The ship is owned and operated by Holland America Line, a subsidiary of Carnival Corporation. The ship has a gross tonnage of 82,317 and can carry up to 1,918 passengers and 803 crew members. The ship has 14 decks and features a variety of amenities including multiple dining options, a fitness center, a spa, and a variety of entertainment venues. The ship sails all over the world including New Zealand, Australia, Alaska, the Caribbean, and Europe. Buckle up. Here is the walking tour of the MS Nordam. All right, now that you know a little more about the MS Nordam, let's do a little bit of a cabin tour. I am in cabin 5021. That's on deck five of the Nordam. And uh, this is a standard balcony. So uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Of course, when you come into the cabin, you have your emergency information, what to do in case of an emergency. You have this little holder here that actually holds the privacy please and the service please indicator. really sure what this is. Does anybody know? Maybe it's a light sensor because uh, at night when you come to this area, lights light up here when you walk in this area to guide you. Maybe that's that light sensor. You do have three switches here that control the lights in the cabin. Uh, first, this one controls the light to the bathroom. This one controls the above the bed lights, the above the bed lights, and the third one controls the lights by the balcony, or actually the entryway lights and the, and the lights by the balcony door. Lights are off here, lights are off there. Of course the main part of the cabin is straightforward. We do have uh, ample closets here. You have your life jackets, a uh, spot for hanging clothes. The shelves are adjustable, but that's a good closet for shirts and such. With more life jacket action. Cubbies. And we have a full length mirror here. Hey, what's up everybody? Turn those lights on. And then a third set, with extra bedding. Uh, more cubbies. You're safe. They have this big area down here. Uh, those are the towels that they provide. Uh, let's do the bathroom while we're here. Pretty spacious bathroom. Comes with a tub standard. Honestly, I'm not a huge tub fan though. Especially we've been in the Tasman Sea. And so it's been a little bit rocky. I've uh, been holding on to stuff quite a bit. Uh, you have an adjustable shower head here. You have their uh, Elemis uh, soaps, shampoo, conditioner, body gel. And then um, like most cruise showers, you have two, two knobs here. The knob here on the left uh, is the water pressure and the knob on the right is the temperature. So um, you wanna make sure you check your temperature before you shoot it on you because uh, it can get pretty hot. Of course you have a, a thing here to, um, a knob to pull up or down for the shower. You have a drain, full on tub. And then you got just standard uh, racks here to hold your towels. Nice little bit of tile work. What's up? You have more of the Elemis. Uh, you have lotion and soap over here. You have a couple st uh, st stocked in place glasses with their own holder. Uh, the uh, Q-tips are mine, that didn't come included. And <laughs> toilet paper extra toilet paper, tissues, a toilet, only for toilet paper. Do you guys know the sound of a toilet on a cruise ship? Very intense. They have some shelves here. Hold your stuff. Hold your stuff. Uh, I don't know what this is. Shower cap. Elemis shower cap. Water is precious. 
can serve it. A couple hooks on the doors. Been using this towel for a couple days. I'm trying to do my best not to waste the linens. All right, moving into the main part of the cabin. Today is the last day of the cruise, and so we have the luggage mats out. I still have to pack up. You've got, of course, this big mirror here. What's up, everybody? Got an end table over here, two drawers. Got some socks down there. Haven't been using this drawer at all. You have a USB over here and a little bit of a, well, I think there's, yeah, there's light switches over here. One's a, turned both of the lights off in the cabin, the main light and the accent lights. And then you have one that operates the little night light. Nice, comfortable king size bed. They give you, uh, of course, two different pillows, two big pillows, two squishy pillows, a couple decorative pillows. You've got uh, temperature control. There's my juggling balls. I keep bringing my juggling balls, but I didn't juggle anywhere exotic. They've sat there most of the cruise. And you got your temperature control. Got the TV. Uh, I haven't watched much TV, but I tell you what, there's an extensive selection of movies on the TV. They have some local TV, uh, but an extensive selection of movies. Holland America for, for free, which is very nice. A uh, couple hooks here. Got my suit coat hanging up. And you do have a couple sets of curtains. So uh, the couch turns into a bed. So you could, uh, you could get some privacy. Uh, of course, I just noticed that curtain doesn't go all the way across. So I'm not... With, I'm not sure what the point of that one is. This one does go all the way across. I guess if you want to have like a dressing, a dressing area. Now the curtains have baffled me the whole, I'm not sure what the point of it is. Then of course you got the uh, desk, the lounging area. You got this couch. Uh, of course you got another nightstand over here. Same thing. You've got USB, you got your phone. You got the three light switches that control the same thing on the other side. Uh, travel CPAP, it was a winner. This cruise, I slept really good. First time I brought my CPAP on a cruise with me. I do have severe sleep apnea. Somebody was asking me about that. I don't, I don't necessarily breathe well uh, because of my sinuses. And then, uh, you know, and then I have the sleep apnea on top of it. So a lot of times you guys get to hear me breathe. You'll probably hear me breathe on this video and uh, appreciate your concern. Um, I'm aware of it. A lot of people will comment, uh, did you know you're breathing hard? As if I'm not the one breathing hard, but yes, uh, I'm aware of it. And uh, I hope that helps you guys understand that I do have some sinus and sleep apnea problems. And then uh, some of you may have noticed I'm a little bit of a bigger guy. Uh, people will point that out too, uh, as if it was a mystery, but I just wanted to share that with you so you're not surprised. Got a little thing to hold some you know, loose stuff. So I've got my, uh, always, the day is my go-to. Like whenever I'm feeling puny at all, I don't know, I always go to that. Haven't really taken any of this cruise. Ibuprofen, when the muscles get sore, when I really can't breathe, I'll take the allergy relief. Got some Benadryl, I haven't even cracked into that. You got uh, USB, standard US outlet. You've got European outlet. I uh, got some old school connections here. Uh, old uh, Cat5 connector, coax cable connector. And then over here behind the the bar setup you have a couple more 120s uh got the little bar set up here that does have a mini bar i have rated it a little bit i'm not sure what i'm going to be charged uh i have champagne that i haven't drank got the mini bar items and then uh i've been uh, compiling the papers so i can take them home and maybe share some of the events and stuff with you still have some new zealand money if you guys are interested in that uh one thing i didn't realize the other day is they have multiple uh, coins to represent different things. So this is a this one with the kiwi, two dollars. The smaller one is a uh, one dollar. Uh, oh, wait, this one's different than the one dollar ones. This one is a fifty cent piece. So, uh, oh yeah, the kiwis are on the one dollar. So you've got the, the two dollar, the one dollar, and the fifty cent piece. How about that? And then um chair comfy chair nice table and uh, i had to eat my lunch here in the cabin just because it's crowded everywhere which i'm sure we will experience as we do this tour and then you've got the mini bar set up 
drink most of the sodas out of here. Some of the water. Show you guys the balcony. Uh, this towel animal, I've had that for days. It survived. Uh, interesting, you got the turn the knob. And uh, it's a pretty chill day on the Tasman Sea. We've we had some bad weather in New Zealand, but we're getting very close. We're like 200 nautical miles from Sydney, and it is very calm and beautiful. Uh, this is that cruise life, y'all. How about that? Uh, I haven't really tried to mess with the chairs much here. Most of the seating on board, uh, they've had arms. And I think I'm just a little wide for almost every seat on board. It's been a little bit of a challenge. Of course, the, that's my challenge, but I don't know what all this stuff is. I don't know if they cleaned it or, or I don't know what. It's a, I don't think that white stuff was there the other day. Interesting. All right, and uh, I think that is the majority of the cabin. Uh, let's go out and explore some of the decks. All right, here we go. All right, this is deck five. We are almost as forward as can be. That is the end of the cruise ship there, the very forward of the cruise ship, the bow. And uh, so, yeah, we'll walk to the forward elevators. I have a lot of interesting, at least on this deck, uh, there's a rich history with Holland America line one of the great presentations I've seen on this cruise was they did go through the history of Holland America Line and their role that they played in immigration. And very interesting stuff. You got these nice indicators on the floor, starboard. The green arrow represents starboard. And then if we go look over here, It's uh, simple touches like that that, you know, try to help you navigate when every hallway essentially looks the same, passageway looks the same. It's, it's good. They've got some cool, like just some cool, interesting furniture uh, all over the place. Of course, you're given a big deck map. There's not a lot of decks on the ship. I mean, you know, they, they've even got stuff down on deck one. It goes all the way up to deck nine, which is the Lido. I think that's where we'll go first. Let's go up to the Lido. The Lido. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the only Bob Skag song guy. I think I know. But yeah, so ship built in 2005. Definitely has some 2005 vibes, wear and tear, that kind of thing. But it's been a it's been a nice 12 days. I'll tell you that. And the staff has been incredible. Uh, food's been incredible. Entertainment's been incredible. I am on this cruise as part of a press junket. I get the nice indicator what day it is. So the press junket, there are 13 of us, including like people's spouses, that were invited on board by Holland America Line. They paid for our cruise. They paid for a portion of our travel. They gave us credit for... Uh, some excursions. Uh, they gave us a drink package, a non-alcoholic drink package. And so a big portion of this trip uh, paid for by Holland America Line. So we're, we're on deck nine and we're where the spa is. I feel like the gym is over here too. Yeah. Let's take a quick look in the gym. I haven't used the gym, but I know that, uh, you guys like to see the gym. Changing room, changing room, changing room. So of course you got public access to the gym. Nice, uh, you have free weights, treadmills, just uh, all the stuff that you'd want in a gym. You got some machines, towels, that kind of thing. I always feel weird uh, filming people when they're working out, so I don't want to spend a lot of time in there. Look, you got a treatment room there. The other half of this hallway is the 
spa. So they do have some they have a thermal suite here, hydro pool. Yeah. So the spa over here. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. And then, and then from the spa, we go right out into the inside pool, the Lido deck covered pool. What is nice is they also have a sauna that's uh, accessible to everyone. So as we move into, oh cool the roof is open today, we move into the Lido. You've got ping pong on these really great wooden ping pong tables. And then again this, uh, this covered pool has been very good for this cruise. When the weather is bad and overcast and rainy, uh, the pool is still full of people. Of course, this is a sea day. Uh, there's a couple places to, well, at least, yeah, two places to eat out here. So you've got people enjoying food while enjoying the pool. Pretty full sailing. We have uh, 1,580 people. Got this nice Lido bar out here. And then a couple of eateries on board. Really my favorite. I've had some fantastic food in specialty dining and in the main dining room. But uh, I really enjoyed the taco bar. They have taco bar on a daily basis, which is really cool. You can avoid some of the lines. Just grab tacos. Taco bar. And then the burger spot that they have on board here is called the Dive-In. Here's a little look at the, the menu. Serving Nathan's hot dogs, a variety of burgers, and the burger's really good. This is the Dive-In. And then as we continue to make our way toward the aft of the ship, uh, we're gonna pass the mid-elevator banks is right there and what's cool on the mid elevators is they have uh they have these elevators that look out on the side of the ship in addition to regular elevators i'll uh, i'll show you those before we uh, get off this journey so here's the lido buffet and also the especially uh, italian restaurant is here It's called Canaletto's, and so at night, they don't have lunch here, but at night, this turns into a specialty Italian restaurant. Uh, we had that, food was really good. Now, as you can see, it's, uh, it's like 1.30, starting to go later into lunch, and uh, the buffet is still pretty crowded. Of course, during the peak time, they're running both sides. Cool thing is there's somebody here stationed with soft drinks. Looks like they're closing down the side where you can get a soft drink. They're starting to close down the buffet. Let's walk to the other side, see if it's still open. I can show you some, some more of the food. But drink stations fruit stations, dessert stations. Again, a lot of cool art on board, like that sculpture. Here's a look at some more of the food. Each day they usually have some sort of special dish. Seafood jambalaya was up earlier. Oh yeah, here's the jambalaya. Almost looks like a paella. Variety of food. A little bit of an ice cream stand over here. And that takes us back out to the pool deck, but I want to go to the rear pool. There's a pool out the aft here at the stern of the ship.
The aft elevators are here. It's the aft elevator bank. And then we have another outdoor area with a pool and hot tubs. More spots for eating. So a couple hot tubs, pool area, lots of places for lounging. And of course you can get the nice wake view of the ship. Get a nice look at the the wake. How about that? We are in the middle of it. And then uh, this is a look at the after the ship. That's the sports court up there. We're gonna go there next. You have a bar out here. And then this area in front of this bar is the smoking area. Climbing these stairs here. on deck 10 and then a little bit more of a climb It'll take us all the way up to the sports court Let's see got a couple Some basketball got cornhole pickleball Hey, how you guys doing? Soccer goal. Lots going on up here. So a lot of people have the question, uh, is Holland America Line just for old folks? I hope that you're seeing that, at least on this cruise, there's a good mix of young and old. nice today. I walk forward a little bit. This should take us above the open pool. Lots of deck space on this ship, which is pretty cool. Classic cruising here, shuffleboard. I've seen this. Uh, I've seen this being played a couple times this week. Nice little stroll on the decks of the Nordam. You'll notice, at least compared to some other lines, there's not a lot of music jamming all the time. You may like that, you may not like that, but it is peaceful on the ship. Got a nice little bench. And then this is the retractable roof. Again, another 
I think a really great feature that makes this pool super usable in any weather. Gosh, it's been so rocky. It's just amazing how calm the sea is. I think we motored hard through the through the rocky parts to get us to this beautiful sea day so we can take it on into Sydney tomorrow. I think I have one more lounger deck up top. Getting my stairs in today, or at least for this part of the tour. No, uh, no worries about not finding a seat today. Of course, you're not near the pool, which I'm sure this is a, maybe a bridge too far for some, but nice kind of isolated spot up here. Another kind of look at the ship. How cool is that? All right, down the stairs. in on deck 10. Hmm. Please show respect. Do you think this is a... I guess we can. Nice. In on deck 10. takes us out to the elevator banks on deck 10 and look at that pretty cool model is that the arc kind of looks like the arc uh, this is the crow's nest observation lounge hey how's it going it's a really nice spot with Wraparound Vista views. Got a bar up here. And you'd be like, oh, this is the library. It's not really. They have uh, multiple collections of books. So we've got a bar up here. Coffee machine is up here. There's several spots for coffee on the ship. And really just a big big spot to chill out and lounge in more books over there this place is pretty chill right now I've seen it pretty full especially like when we were Milford Sound that kind of thing but really nice I like it when cruise ships provide one of these kind of wraparound window deals good shot of where we are <laughs> we've uh, we've almost done it all getting very close supposed to be in Sydney at 6 a.m. tomorrow and then they have a nice collection of games and puzzles back here Decent amount of games. <laughs> puzzles. Lots of puzzles. Books. And that's deck 10. It's uh, all the way forward. Deck 10, the crow's nest. Uh, let's, uh, let's take it all the way to the bottom. 
let's go down to let's go down to deck one and explore deck one. Turned out to be a nice day. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Yeah, yeah. I got half the roof open on the later deck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I was expecting to go out and see it closed still. And yeah. There's a lot of good sunshine out there. Deck two, lower promenade deck. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. Deck one, main deck. All right, so all the essential services are on the main deck, deck one. Uh, guest services, excursions. We are all the way forward. So to get to the main atrium, we got to duck through some cabins. I think forward and aft. Okay, so if we want to go to uh, guest services, We'll go this way. I can't remember what's here. Oh, this is the bottom of the theater. The world stage. I think it's like side entrance. I think this takes us right to the side of the stage. A Dutch version of the SS France or the Queen Mary. She was the first ocean liner in the world to have a glass enclosed promenade deck. Which might not seem like a big deal, but it would actually be four more years before another ship had such a, a modern and forward looking feature. That was the cruise director, Daniel. He's the cruise and travel director, which is a distinction they give to cruise directors here on Holland America Line, cruise and travel. And so they're, they develop presentations. Daniels did several talks about travel and the ports that we were going to. So serving a dual role, not only as cruise director, but also as someone who uh, really kind of connects you to uh, the places that you're going. So we're going forward. Well, we're going, we're going toward the toward the aft right now. Leaving the forward section of the ship. Making our way to the atrium. Australia and New Zealand regulations do require a mask on the inside right now. So I've got one on and if you see everybody with their mask on, that's why. Not required outside. Here's these elevators on the side, the mid elevators. And then this is the future cruise. The atrium area. This is shore excursions. As you can tell, we're at the end of the trip, so no shore excursions required. The atrium bar, I've not really seen this open, this cruise. It's weird the position of the atrium. But there's some nice seating here. Some other offices and then we have guest services and then we have more passenger rooms down this way 
offices, seating areas. That's essentially all you have on deck one as far as things to see. Climb these stairs to go up to deck two where the, I would say the majority of things happen on the ship here on deck two. Okay, we're at the midship elevators. Uh, this is the Pinnacle Grill, essentially the steakhouse here on the ship. 39 dollars per person really good value for that and right across from it is the pinnacle bar nice bar with seating area the back of the pinnacle bar have the art gallery. How are you? How are you doing? Doing great. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Alina. She has helped us out so much. Thank you <laughs> Thank so much you. for a great week. Have fun. Thank you. So we have the Lincoln Center stage here. This is actually a venue that's going away. Portrait studio, the main dining room. All the way at the aft of the ship. Very nice dining room. Got, of course, big windows at the back. Tablecloths. I'll say it a thousand times. <laughs> the food has been excellent at every venue. So yeah, it was just recently announced that the Lincoln Center stage is going to go away as a venue on board and it will become a traveling show moving from ship to ship and the performance will happen on the world stage on the main theater. Again, they've got some really interesting pieces on board. Still on deck two. It's 
kind of considered the music walk. Starting back there with the Lincoln Center stage. Hey, how's it going? And of course, this is the Rolling Stone Lounge. Uh, they have live music in here. Have a DJ sometimes. They do game shows. This room is always packed in the evening. I've seen a game show here. I've seen live music uh, dancing into the evening. Nice bar. So you see the lineup here dancing most through the night tonight, all the way 11 p.m. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. That's the other uh, question you get a lot. It's like, people go to sleep at nine here. Not really, at least not on this cruise. Casino has been happening well after midnight. Uh, the piano bar goes late, I think till midnight. Piano bar is really cool here. It's called Billboard One. We're coming up on it now. You got dueling pianos, which is really cool. Billboard on board is what it is. Great seating areas, dueling pianos. They do the bingo here, they do trivia. And then of course at night they have the dueling pianos. Got the casino over here, poker table in the back. Got uh, all kinds of stuff going on. It's our friend Simon, best blackjack player I know. And then as we move forward, it takes us to the second level of the world stage. Peek in for another view. How's it going? Every single day. The ship's kitchen is like 240 gallons of milk, 80 bags of flour, 12,000 eggs, 1,000 pounds of bacon, 14,000 loaves of bread. When a lamp stew was on the menu, it was 110 whole bags. There's a lot of restrooms here and there. And then there's a, I don't know if there's an entrance here to the world stage, but inside of the world stage, you can climb to deck three for a balcony view. Okay. Yeah. Here's the balcony view. I mean, it's quite strange because on the New Amsterdam, we have no escort. There are no ships with us at all. We just sailed alone. But the New Amsterdam was very fast, and the German U boats couldn't keep up with it. So she escaped, being pink and gray. She could slip into fog or disappear on the horizon. By the time the war was over, you might have to damage steam over half a million miles. Deck three is also the full on promenade. You can do a complete lap around the ship, which is nice. You can also get some more of them awesome views. These are the forward elevators on deck three. Make our way into the Exploration Cafe, which is a really nice spot on the ship. First they have this big workspace where they do classes. And one of the classes you can do is for 25 bucks, they will walk you through creating a painting. And uh, these were all created this cruise. Some really amazing paintings. 
nice workspace too, especially early in the morning. Down here at Explorers, they also have another big collection of books. So you can grab a book, take a book to read. And they have these rooms, so right now you got bridge play in there. They also uh, they have a priest on board. They're doing Catholic Mass here, which I haven't seen that on a ship in a while. You got the Mahjong going on here. These are multi purpose rooms, they do different things. Just pop in and play a game. They always have a crossword puzzle out. Of course, this is the coffee bar. Jacqueline? These coffee selections. And then from the Exploration Cafe, we hit the shops. Because what would cruising be without shopping? Oh, it's like fragrance. You even notice this tucked away over here. You got like fragrance area. Jewelry. You got the logo shop. Just clothing, souvenirs. Watches, okay. jewelry by the inch, gold by the inch. Looks like we're gonna have ourselves an art auction up here. It's another little bar area. I haven't really seen much up here. Let's see if we can identify what this bar is called. Oh, it looks like they're getting ready to have a, a martini tasting. That's pretty cool. Art auction. Okay, that's the ocean bar. The ocean bar. And uh, another look down at the atrium. I love that ornate chandelier. Okay, not a huge atrium, but it's nice. It's really nice. What I do like about the aesthetic of the ship is it feels like you're doing nautical stuff, which is nice. Definitely feels like cruising. Get the photo area. And then we have the second level, second level of the dining room. All right, let's do this. Let's go ride the mid elevators so I can show you the how cool that looks.
not an exceptionally long cruise ship, which is nice. Can really get from the forward to the aft pretty quickly. There we go. Let's go all the way up to deck nine. It's just interesting just to have these elevators on the side of the ship like this. Kind of a neat use of space. And also a neat way to look at the deck nine. Look at the sea. We'll wait and take it back down to five. Oh, wow, perfect timing. Head back to the cabin, finish this up. Some really unique old photographs on this deck. All right, we are back in the cabin. That was my mega guided walking tour of Holland America Line's MS Nordam. Holland America fans out there, have you been on this ship? Is this a normal fare for you? And how about folks who've never cruised on Holland America Line? What'd you think of the ship? Did you like it? Uh, were you surprised by the crowds or anything, the artwork? Uh, I would love to hear your feedback. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the ship tour. Please do me a favor, hit the like button. Also, YouTube thinks that you would like to watch this video next. Uh, you should watch it. This is Tony for La Lido Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.